looks like that's all the audience we have for today, so I'm going to start. Uh, hello, my name is Alex Nemish, and uh, I was interested in working with Scala for several years. And I find this language very, uh, very good, very interesting. It's feature rich, uh, though it's concise and uh, well, well done. <laughs> The only feature I was missing uh, in Scala uh, these years was actually a macro system. And when I heard that it's going to be introduced and then got introduced into languages, I was very excited. And um, I thought, what, uh, what interesting and cool can be implemented with this macro system? That's basically how JScala was born. Um, so. What is JScala? It's basically a macro or a couple of macros that uh, tries to convert a Scala code into a JavaScript AST, abstract syntax tree, uh, which then can be pretty printed to a string or even evaluated, um, well, using a Java's uh, Reno interpreter, for example. Uh, so, what's included in J uh, JScala? It's basically JavaScript AST to represent uh, JavaScript, macros uh, that convert Scala code into, a, the, into this AST, actually the pretty printer, uh, macro annotations and TypeScript import are the features I'm going to show you uh, with the code. So, why would someone uh, use JScala? Well, obviously, it's type safety. Uh, JavaScript is a dynamic language, no uh, type safety at all. Uh, it has a ID support because, you know, if you use ID or Eclipse, it can help you a lot. Uh, all the refactorings, all this stuff just works. That's great. Modularity, because you have all the language, all the Scala language, all the objects, uh, function composition, decomposition, traits, all that things that you can use. Well, you use single language. If you write a server-side code on, uh, using Scala, you can write your JavaScript using Scala. That's cool. And the way JScala works, it uh, in most cases, literally translate uh, your Scala code into JavaScript. So no boiler of plate. Uh, there is a, a Scala.js project, uh, which is a backend compiler, a JavaScript compiler for Scala, uh, which uh, has much greater features, but it compiles to a kind of uh, generated code which requires uh, quite big runtime library for it to run. Uh, in case of JScala, it's just plain translated code, no, almost no uh, generated stuff. Uh, so as Linus Torvalds once said, uh, talk is cheap, show me the code. So there is a simple example of a uh, of a Scala code, which basically um, I don't have a pointer, unfortunately. Uh, so you can see that uh, I use this JavaScript uh, kind of a word. Actually, it's a function that takes a block of code. And this block of code, block of Scala code, uh, is going to be translated during compilation into a JavaScript AST. Uh, we can represent that AST as a string using as string function, and that's going to be a JavaScript, basically. So uh, after compilation and execution of this uh, println, we will get this code. So it's pure JavaScript, even uh, relatively well formatted. So um, if we look at the basic features on the previous slide, we can see that we define a function uh, we, de we define a value language uh, which uses if as an expression. If you know uh, in JavaScript, 
um, if is a statement. So you need to assign to a variable something and so on, or use a ternary operator. Uh, here I use a match expression and just call in a function print. So this gets translated into a, yeah, uh, as I said, ternary expression and uh, in a switch. And, well, actually, <laughs> print uh, call. So uh, as you may see, very small uh, boilerplate, uh, very similar to what we are trying to express in Scala. Uh, oh, and e uh, even uh, string interpolation works. So I used S uh, string interpolator uh, and I embedded language variable into a string and it's get, uh, it, it gets translated correctly. Okay, so what other features uh, do we have? So basically you can define variables, functions, lambdas, all that stuff, uh, all the basic uh, things like if, force, uh, even try throw, finally works. I uh, have basic support for classes and traits, and you can inherit those. Uh, unfortunately, no full, you know, kind of, kind of linearization, all that um, constructor calling, all that complexity is not implemented yet. But basic things like uh, <coughs> decomposing on traits with functions is working. Uh, all the arrays and traversables, except for maps, uh, are uh, translated into JavaScript arrays. Maps translated to objects, uh, obviously. Uh, there is a JS dynamic uh, functionality I'm going to show you with examples. And inje uh, injection is possible, so you can inject into your JavaScript values from your Scala code, which is interesting. So uh, I'll start with showing you what you can do with the uh, JScala's AST, JavaScript AST. So you can manipulate them manually, uh, or you can use a macro to kind of create this AST uh, representation from a Scala code. Uh, so what I do here is I define a variable test, uh, which is uh, a object you can see that I have um, a bunch of uh, <coughs> a bunch of uh, serializers for Scala types into JavaScript. So this map gets converted uh, gets converted to a JavaScript object. Uh, so I just generate this tree, um, and when I evaluate it, I get this result. So this may uh, look like what you do in Lyft if you have a, a constructed JavaScript a AST that Lyft uses. It's pretty much similar, but uh, the way to avoid this manual tree creation is to use macros. So I'm going to show you how it works. So here I use JavaScript uh, macro. And there are a bunch, of, a bunch of features here. So this array, Scala array, is going to be converted to a JavaScript array. You can include a raw JavaScript using a include function. These four are going to be definitely four. Um, and uh, there is another thing. For example, you want to use a jQuery. And it has a bunch of uh, methods, huge amount of methods. And for them to call and to be translated into JavaScript AST, you need a signatures of those functions with all their arguments and uh, all the stuff. It's, um, and every time you want to use a library, you, you would need these signatures. And that's not what you want to do always. So Scala has this great feature uh, called uh, dynamic. Uh, so I use it. So if you create variable and its type is JS dynamic, everything that you call on this variable just going to be translated literally. Uh, well, if you see this dollar 
uh, ID, append, all this uh, thing is going to be converted into JavaScript, uh, literally. So uh, another interesting thing is that uh, if you see the Scala value, it's a string, uh, so you can inject it into, uh, into this code. Uh, and you need to manually say it, you're injecting it because otherwise uh, this expression print uh, Scala value is going to be literally translated to print Scala value <laughs> with uh, no actually uh, URL in it. So that's what's going to be generated. Uh, as you may see, raw JavaScript was included, array translated for and the value of Scala value is injected instead of just print Scala value. Okay, so when I implemented this, uh, I thought it's interesting how, uh, how complex uh, your program could be using these um, kind of basic features. So I've taken a JavaScript implementation of Tetris and implemented it in, in Scala inside the JavaScript macro. Uh, then I uh, generated a string uh, from this Scala code and run it in browser. So basically, when I do, it just works. So we can play. Yeah. So uh, if we look at the code, so you can see you can see this Tetris object function classes functions all that bunch of code. It's four hundred lines of code gets translated into this. JavaScript, which is basically literal translation. Mm -hmm. And it, it just works. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, that, uh, that's interesting one. So um, I thought, that's interesting. I write code in uh, Scala and I run it as a JavaScript. Is it possible to run it also as a, as a Scala code? Uh, apparently it is, uh, with the support of macro annotations. It's a new feature. Uh, if you heard about it, you know it. But basically, um, I can get whatever is annotated with a macro annotation as a Scala AST, and I can traverse it and generate whatever I want. So I've implemented this JavaScript uh, macro annotation, and apparently I can reuse my Scala code and run it in, uh, well, uh, in, on a JVM and in a JavaScript interpreter at the same time. So uh, here I define a class user and a greeter that actually just prints, uh, prints a name. And when I create uh, a user, and I run a hello function, it just prints hello. Um, when I, if I reuse the previous definitions uh, and I write this code, which generates a JavaScript that reuses user class and a greater class and actually runs the hello function too, uh, I, I combine those uh, AST into a program, run it using arena, using the function eval, it just prints hello Alex. It generates this JavaScript actually. So you may see that uh, user and greeter classes are converted into uh, functions. Well, you don't have anything else in JavaScript much. Um, gets, uh, it gets converted uh, mostly, again, mostly literally into JavaScript, and it works if you run it. Okay, so again, I saw um, how complex uh, could be the 
program I could write uh, and run on JVM and uh, as a JavaScript at the same time. So I, have, uh, I took a AS implementation, a JavaScript implementation uh, from the internet uh, and rewrote it in Scala. I know it's not the best to do, <laughs> not the best way to write uh, an encryption standard, but it's just to show you an example. <clears throat> so what I've done, I've implemented this uh, AS class that takes a key and well basically I implemented the encryption. So y you may see that it uses all the uh, shifts and source and well, quite complex logic. Uh, implemented in uh, in Scala, uh, in Scala class annotated with JavaScript um, macro annotation. That's why I can reuse this code uh, for JavaScript, interpreter, and for Scala. So uh, I write this uh, controller. I used play for framework to show you the example. Oh, sorry. Um, so basically, I created a form that uh, whenever you type in, it just uh, encrypts it, and when you send the form, it decrypts it. Looks it, it, it looks like that. So whatever you, I put into a text to encrypt, it gets encrypted. So it's in encrypted integers. So I'm gonna send it. It decrypts it uh, on the server side and seem to work. Uh, I use JavaScript implementation to encrypt the uh, text, send it to a server, and then I reuse the same code uh, on the server side to decrypt the message and uh, return plain text again. So it's the same code, same AS implementation used in both cases. Okay. Um, so when I told you that uh, you can use JS Dynamic to, uh, well, write anything in your Scala that's going to be converted in JavaScript, like literally, well, it's interesting, but uh, it's kind of useless because um, you, you're losing all the type safety, all the ID support that you might want to. Uh, and who uses plain JavaScript these days? You almost always use libraries, jQuery, Angular, whatever. <coughs> That's why the support, uh, it's very desirable, I mean, the support from ID. And uh, there is a TypeScript uh, language, which is basically a JavaScript with types. Uh, so I thought, is it possible to reuse a TypeScript uh, TypeScript somehow to get the support from ID. And apparently there is a project on a GitHub that contains um, a lot of uh, bindings written in TypeScript, TypeScript declarations for most of the JavaScript uh, libraries, JQ, Angular. Um, it has a declaration of its functions, its types, um, and I thought, is it possible to kind of parse those declarations and generate uh, generate same uh, Scala code we can reuse. And uh, there is a guy uh, in France, in Paris, I believe, uh, who decided to implement this. Uh, he implemented uh, this type scripted uh, macro that you can uh, define, uh, you can set a path to a TypeScript definition file with, for example, a jQuery, uh, <coughs> jQuery method annotated, 
And what this Mac annotation does, it generates, uh, it, it translates a TypeScript declaration into a uh, classes, into Scala classes with methods, with all types, all these things. So you can uh, then reuse it and, well, actually get a ID support. So you may see on this uh, slide that I'm getting a so, so ID support actually. So very cool feature. So and it works for kind of most of the uh, declaration TypeScript declarations. Um, Want to talk about uh, cons of JScala? Uh, it, it it uses only subset of Scala, so you cannot put anything you want into a JavaScript macro, or you cannot annotate any complex any complexity class with JavaScript annotation yet, because uh, it's you know it's my pet project. I do it after work, on the evenings. Um, I may say it uh, covers only basic parts of the library. So if you define an array or a map, it's going to be translated into JavaScript array or an object. But if you want to use maps, filters, all the uh, things you got used to, unfortunately, they're going to be literally converted to calls of filter methods and map methods, which are, in most cases, not defined on uh, arrays and objects in JavaScript. Uh, there is uh, there is a, an idea to kind of generate an unders underscore calls. Uh, I mean JavaScript underscore library, uh, but it's not implemented yet. Um, by the way, uh, pull requests are well, very welcome. <laughs> Any support is very welcome. Um, well, an obvious cons is uh, that I use macros. It's a very experimental feature. It changes, it changes sometimes, but that's that's fine. I uh, have a good support from Eugen, um, so he's a very good guy. Helps a lot. Thanks. Okay, well that's pretty much all. Uh, thank you. If you have uh, any questions, you're welcome. Thanks. Um, it's a it's a simple one. Could you show maybe a little bit? I'm curious about the code you reused on the encryption example mm -hmm, the, sure. that, that was reused in the client side and the server side. Sure. Um, so here is the AS uh, class. Here I create encryption and decryption tables. Those are arrays of ints, of arrays of arrays of ints. Um, pre compute S boxes. Do you have a. No, yeah. that, that's fine. Sorry. That's fine. So in this section, of course, you're using a limited subset of the language because you sure. know it's, you're using it for JavaScript. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah. As I as I said, unfortunately, there are a, a lot of a lot of differences in how JavaScript uh, interprets things and Scala things, uh, mathematically and uh, and so on. So. Um, you cannot express everything and expect everything to work the same way. But um, if you know what you're doing, it's possible. Got it. Thanks. Uh, for example, uh, Scala.js project uh, aims to kind of eliminate all these problems, but there's a uh, hu huge amount of work put into that. Uh, as far as I understand, uh, you basically translating during a compilation time from Scala to JavaScript. Uh, yeah, to JavaScript AST. That's correct. 
but how dynamic could be output? Basically, could I generate dynamical JavaScript, uh, which depends on the current status of my variables? So I do not pass the entire code there, but basically generate JavaScript dynamically based on the status of the current scale part. You see what I mean? I ha do have some status on the server part, and then I call as string, how dynamic could be output? Uh, yes, um, it actually works. There is a, uh, I call it JS, uh, JS something. It, it, it just remembers a function. And every time you call as string, it, th this function, this, uh, it, this function gets executed. So you can, uh, you can create a closure that reads this status you want to get every time updated. And this function is going to be called and uh, the value, actual value is going to be inserted. Uh, I can show you this example. One second. I forgot to kind of explicitly, uh, yeah. Tell about that. So you can see this rent function, which basically generates a random int. It get, gets converted to a JavaScript. And this rent function is uh, called in last four. Uh, second. Yeah, here. You see, uh, I call this rent function, and I expect it to be called and random value generated. And if, uh, if we look at what's uh, generated, you see this four. Um, and every time I execute, I execute as string, this rent function is going to be called uh, every time. So um, yeah, so you can, uh, you can closure, you can create this kind of closures, uh, any amount of uh, them. Uh, also, one more feature I forgot to add is that sometimes you uh, you don't you don't want to translate the generated uh, JavaScript AST into a string, and you want to just compiler to, to create it to be created during compilation time. For example, for for performance reasons, say uh, there is a macro called JavaScript string that actually gets a Scala code and directly during compilation time translate it into a string. So it's uh, kind of performance wise it has zero uh, overhead. Since only a subset of the Scala language is supported, do you have some kind of warnings or something at compile time which yes. may tell? It just falls this huge stack of errors. <laughs> 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 so, so well, actually, now at compile time, okay, this is really not supported, and you may not. Yeah, yeah. It well, it, it says something uh, like this syntax is not supported, something like that. I'm gonna work on this. It's gonna be bad. <laughs> so, uh, this ahead of time compilation that you were talking about, does it is the it, does it hook like into SBT or? Like well, it, uh, macro system is implemented as a uh, one of the compilator phases. So, it, it, when you compile uh, this code, it just gets translated. So, yeah, it, it's run by SBT, but it works as a part of Scala compiler. There are interesting things uh, there because of this. Um, macro expansion stage phase actually uh, is run between other stages and not all the um, checks um, are made before macro expansion that causes uh, very interesting features uh, pr problems actually because um, you can uh, well, some of the checks uh, of overriding and the stuff are made after a macro expansion. So you can write inside a macro code, Scala code, that is not completely type checks uh, because these checks are made 
after the uh, micro expansion and after micro expansion scala code just does not exist anymore <laughs> so so now my question uh, usually i see javascript embedded in html which is delivered by a server uh, how i would do it with your system uh, well usually uh, how you might do this in Scala, you might uh, write a XML literal and you may pass a string in, into it. So you may uh, write a AST dot as string and it's gonna be converted to a string and you can pass that into to your web browser then, for example. If you do a lift programming, uh, that's interesting because uh, if you write all these uh, AJAX handlers um, in, in Lyft, you either use uh, primitives they um, they provide, but you, you need to generate a JSCMD, JS, uh, JavaScript command, to, to be returned to a web browser to be executed. So um, I found myself writing these uh, JS if expressions of this alert uh, set HTML. Uh, well, th that's basically a kind of high level JavaScript AST that's actually going to be converted by leaf to a string. Uh, and what JScala can do, it can eliminate using those um, manual trees, manual JavaScript trees. Uh, by writing a uh, Scala code that got converted into it. So it's it, very easy. It, it's one line uh, implicit conversion from a uh, JScala's AST to, uh, for example, Lyft uh, AST, because Lyft has this uh, kind of JS raw class that you can pass a string to. And you can uh, get this string by calling S string on a JScala AST. So you can easily reuse it or combine. Uh, hello, my question is uh, on JavaScript. We uh, we inherent uh, adding uh, properties or methods to the prototype. Uh, could we use Scala traits to build some code that will be added to the prototype to the prototype of an object? So make uh, use the traits to use the inherence on JavaScript and get some complex uh, combination of traits. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Uh, well, yes, yes, uh, this is possible. That's not how I implemented it yet. Uh, basically, how it works currently, uh, whenever whenever you define a class that extends uh, and mixes in traits, all the uh, um, macro implementation just finds all the methods into this into those traits and just generate one huge class with all of these methods so they're not reused kind of the every time you extend the trait the function generated going to be with those uh, functions from traits ex explicitly um, copied i'd say uh, it's uh, the way I implemented it, the reason I implemented it this way is just because it's the simplest way <laughs> possible. But yes, yes, it's possible to do with prototypes. Um. Oh, but the, it's recorded just. Uh, so the JavaScript standard has lots of different types of, of expressions, and I'm just curious how complex or simple your AST ends up being. Um, like how much of that do you represent in the AST? How much do you, do you simplify away? <laughs> I think most, most of the JavaScript can be expressed with my AST. Um, well, I'd say 90% probably. Maybe more, maybe I don't know something. That's, that's also possible. But, uh, you know, I, I, I've taken, uh, I took that uh, Tetris example and I just rewrote it and I had no, no issues. Almost no issues. Okay, I, I have one question too. Um, sure. Somebody uh, talked about SBT and how to implement it. Um, currently, and you used the play framework, and they started with play.2.3, uh, the SBT web plugins. Are there any plans to 
um, marriage like your plugin with the West Web SPT plugin. So you generate like your JavaScript, which can then be uglified, minified, optimized. Huh. Uh, well, yes, it's possible. I, I haven't thought about this um, yet because you know. Uh, things uh, should go I in a way. So first guys uh, would start using it <laughs> at all. And then we're going to solve problems like what we do with huge JavaScripts, etc. Because uh, uh, mostly the idea behind Java's uh, JScala was that you, uh, you kind of use it for creating a small composable ASTs. You can uh, you can kind of generate those ASTs that uh, closure f other functions, and then you can combine those. And I have API for combine for these uh, AST trees, um, ASTs combinations. So you can uh, simply kind of take two blocks of uh, code. I mean, uh, two blocks of expression. Uh, described in this AST and just kind of concatenate those and you can uh, traverse those uh, and I, I have an API for that so if you're looking for uh, JavaScript AST you can just reuse uh, only AST if you don't want a macro system if you don't like to use an experimental feature you can uh, try to use uh, AST simply so uh, yes it's possible uh, but not yet implemented because it's not not the time <laughs> for it yet. So um, on the Scala side of the AES example, you had undefined. What was that? Um, yeah, it's in red. Scroll down a bit. Go, no, go down. Go down. Uh, sorry? Scroll down. Ah. Yeah, there. While s box of x dot equals undefined. What is undefined? Well, uh, <laughs> it's a uh, JavaScript. Well, actually, has so I get, this. I get it, sorry, I get it in JavaScript. What is it in Scala? Oh, it's just, uh, I don't know, value or function. Doesn't matter. I, 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 well, it's defined into a, in the uh, org JavaScript package. And uh, macro implementation treats these kind of things uh, specially. So it knows what undefined means in this and, case. And what does undefined mean? In it, it gets translated into a JavaScript undefined simple. It, it has no meaning. Uh, so uh, if, I'm if asking I, on the Scala side. Uh, so uh, it's just null. Just null. Just okay. null, yeah. Just null. Wow. Okay. Sorry, didn't get it. <laughs> um, no questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.